Okay, so let's look at this next problem. Uh, <clears throat> we're still in translation. Uh, we've got a motorcycle shown in the figure. The motorcycle has a mass of 125 kilograms uh, that is centered at G1. So maybe put its weight down here, 125 times 9.81. Uh, and then the rider has a mass of 75 kilograms. But he is centered at G2. So we've got... Uh, an object that has two centers of mass, so a problem like this, we'll, we'll see how to handle that. <clears throat> so, we want to know the, the minimum coefficient of static friction between the wheels and the pavement in order for the rider to do a wheelie, uh, in order for him to, to, to barely lift the front wheel off the ground, right? To barely lift, what, what? So, so if we want to know kind of the minimum that... This front wheel is almost, it's barely even touching. The ground is barely even touching it right here. Then what is that telling us? It's, it's telling us to set the normal force right here at wheel A to zero. Okay. And then what acceleration is necessary? Neglect the mass of the wheels. Okay. All right. So what, what it's really telling us is, hey, this N right here at A is zero, uh, but he's doing a wheelie. There, there could be an N right here at B, uh, and there's also a force of friction. Uh, do you see why it would be going forward? Uh, sometimes friction is needed to cause rotation. In this case, friction is the only force in the X direction. Uh, friction is what makes your car go forward. Um, and if you didn't realize that if you put it the wrong direction, then I think when you came down here and started summing the forces in X, and you saw that friction is the only, you know, and you know it's going forward, um, maybe you would realize that, that that force of friction is in the x direction. Okay, this is a maximum, uh, or not, or a maximum, it, this is an extreme case. Uh, what's the minimum coefficient of static friction? Why is it static friction for wheels that are rolling without slipping? The velocity here is zero, and so yeah, yeah, it is static, not kinetic friction, <clears throat> as long as there's no slipping of that wheel right there. Uh, so anyway, this force friction would be mu s times n. Would be mu s times n. I think that's say the free body diagram. We've got force. We only have these four forces right here. Two weights, each acting at their center of gravity and force of friction and the normal force on that back wheel B. All right, so do we draw a free body diagram? I think that's the most important part of the problem is drawing that free body diagram correctly, putting all the forces in there, uh, not forgetting any forces. Uh, let's draw some axes. But anyway, we've got a free body diagram and now let's sum the forces in the X direction. We've got mu S N <clears throat> and that's it. And so do you see why that, you know, that leads to mass times acceleration in the X and I, it, it's accelerating forward, right? He's going forward. He's not, he's not quite coming up or rotating. He's just going forward right now. It's barely starting to lift, or it's barely <coughs> lifted from the front, um, from the front uh, ground at that front wheel. All right. So sum of the force in x equals mass times acceleration in x. So so here we've got 75 times its acceleration in x, 125 times its acceleration in x. These are going to be the same acceleration, right? He's moving with the bicycle. The bicycle doesn't move faster than he does. Uh, we could have combined those to a 200. I think I will do that. To a 200 <clears throat> acceleration in the X. Okay, but a lot of unknowns. I don't know. Three unknowns so far. Uh, this is NB right here. Let me jump ahead. Summing the forces in the Y direction. NB minus 75 9.81 minus 125 9.81 uh, equals mass let me let me not put zero too soon but I think this will be zero mass times acceleration in the y what is the acceleration in the y well he he hasn't he hasn't started he hasn't lifted from the ground he's almost lifted from the ground he hasn't lifted from the ground this is just translation uh, there's no acceleration in the y direction right here. <clears throat> okay, good. So I can solve for NB. I've got it as 1962. Try that again. 1962 newtons. <clears throat> so I can plug that in right there. But still not enough. All right, so now I can sum the forces. 
<clears throat> sorry, now I can sum the moments. But let's think about what a uh, point we want to sum the moments about. <clears throat> if we sum the moments about the center of gravity, it's equal to I G alpha, and that's it, right? If we sum the moments about G, it's equal to I G alpha. In this case, alpha is zero. Uh, but what if we have two G's? <clears throat> what if we have two G's? One option that I'm not going to talk about right here is finding the overall center of gravity, G. Maybe it's right here. Uh, it's taking a weighted average, almost a centroid, of those two points. Um, I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> and so I, my options right here, I, I kind of think I have three options. <clears throat> if I summed the moments... If I sum the moments about G2, that's fine. I, I can sum the moments about G2. This one creates a moment. This one creates a moment. This one, you know, sum all those moments about G2. <clears throat> it would be equal to I G2 alpha. Uh, alpha is zero. But because I have this other G out here, I might need to do the M A D of point one, of point one, or, or G1, right, of the bike. If I sum the moments about the center of gravity of the man, I've, I might have this MAD of the other center of gravity right here. <coughs> Probably be a, zero, a, a negative MAD right there. So that's one option. You can sum the moments about G2, but then you have the MAD of... G1, you guessed it, you could sum the moments about G1, I, G1, alpha, alpha is zero, <clears throat> but then you might have, I think this one might be a plus, the M, A, D of, you know, as if G, no, this would also be negative, sorry, uh, the M, <clears throat> mm, sorry, This one, this one would be positive. We, we're not get go too far down that road. Uh, this last one would be negative. The M A D of G two. So if you were summing the moments about G two, then this M A vector, M two A two, and this distance between G two and G one, right there. Almost like it's creating a, so that would be negative. Whereas, <clears throat> if we sum the moments about G2, I drew all over this. If we sum the moments about, sorry, G2, then we'd have this M1A1 vector that we would sort of sum right here. Okay, so if you sum the moments about one of the centers of gravity, don't forget the MAD of the other center of gravity. But if you sum the moments, <clears throat> what? So, so we could do either of those. Option one, option two, those would work. Um, but you'd have two equations, two unknowns, which wouldn't be too, too bad. <clears throat> but if... I, what if I sum the moments about point B? Why might I want to sum the moments about point B? Well, if I sum the moments about point B, NB goes straight through it. The force of friction goes straight through it. So it kind of eliminates some unknowns. It eliminates those um, un variables in my equation. So I'm going to sum the moments about point B. So follow with me here. Summing the moments about point B. And B goes straight through it, force of friction goes straight through it. I have this weight right here, the 75 times 9.81. It's acting 0.4 away, creating a negative, because I, I like to say positive is counterclockwise, creating a negative moment about point B. I've got the weight of the bike, <clears throat> 125 times 9.81. Uh, it's moment arm, 0.8 creating a clockwise, so a negative moment. All right, so that's it. So that equals I alpha, but alpha is zero. 
But now I have the, the MAD, MAD of G1 and MAD of G2. All right, if you sum the moments about a point other than center of gravity, you've got the MAD of the centers of gravity. So let's look at this MA of, of G1. I've got M of 1, 125, sorry. The A of 1, which is AX, which I haven't calculated yet. That's my un, an unknown. <clears throat> All right, what would be the distance, the perpendicular distance from this acceleration vector to point B? That would be point 0.6. And this, it's almost like this is, it's not creating a moment, but it's almost like that acceleration vector or that MA vector is creating a moment about B. That moment would be negative. So this is minus MAD of G1. And then also MA, this is 0.6, MAD of G2. So here is the MA. To a two vector. All right, so its distance, perpendicular distance, would be 0.9. It's that distance. Do you see how it's perpendicular to that acceleration vector? And if this was, if I was thinking, still summing the moments, this is almost like a clockwise, so a negative moment. And so that's what I'm going to do. So step back. A problem like this, you have, you actually have four options. I didn't really talk about, you could find one center of gravity in between the two centers of gravity, and you could sum the moments about that center of gravity. All right, I'm not going to do that. You could, if you sum the moments about one center of gravity, you've got the MAD of the other center of gravity. If you get, if you sum the moments about the other center of gravity, you've got the MAD of the other center of gravity. Or just forget that, just sum the moments about some point B, and you've got the MADs of both of those centers of gravity. This is the same acceleration, right? G1 is accelerating the same as G2. <clears throat> so here, I've eliminated some unknowns. This equation only has one unknown. I would get AX 8.95 meters per second squared, and then plug that back in up there, plug in back in up there, and get mu s.912. Mu s.912.